All right, hello everyone. My name is James Reed, and I will be giving a tutorial on how to install NeuroSim. So this is the in-house um, simulation framework that Professor Shimon Yu's lab has developed over the years. Um, and I'll be showing how to install it and how to run NeuroSim. So starting off, I've opened the manual. This comes in uh, with the GitHub repository. And this gives the full instructions on how to install it and goes over all the features of NeuroSim and gets into the details of how the simulator works. So if we scroll down past the introduction and the new feature highlights, we come to the system requirements. So generally we recommend to install NeuroSim on a Linux machine with NVIDIA GPUs installed into it. Um, so far we have tested Red Hat Linux as well as Ubuntu, both work, um, given you have the GCC compiler above version 4.5. So starting off, oftentimes if your server is owned by your organization, you might have something, a package manager like Anaconda already installed, um, but we recommend using such a package manager. If it's not already installed on your machine, you can follow this link to install it. So here I'm on the Miniconda website and I pick the version uh, corresponding to my machine. In our case, it would be a Linux 64-bit machine. So I'll click on that and it will download the, uh, the bash file there. You would need to be doing this on your machine itself. After you have SSH, you could upload this to the machine and then uh, run the commands to install it afterwards. So if you follow their uh, install commands here, follow these instructions uh, to use the file that you just downloaded to install Miniconda. And in our case, we already have Miniconda on our uh, system. So I won't be installing this, but you know, if you need help, you can feel free to reach out. So back to the manual. After we've installed Miniconda, we are going to get the tool from GitHub. So this involves cloning uh, the repository. So I will open my text editor and um, terminal of choice. In my case, I use VS Code. And this is on my local machine. So this is on my laptop or on my uh, desktop in the lab. Um, and first I will SSH into the server that has the NVIDIA GPUs on it that I want to run NeuroSim on. So I've already done that in this case. And here's my terminal down below. This is connected through SSH to the server with GPUs on it. So what I'm going to do is clone the repository using this command here. So copied it paste it into my terminal, git clone, and then the NeuroSim repository on GitHub. It's possible you may need to sign into GitHub um, by supplying your username and password before it allows you to clone it. Um, alternatively, you could go to the GitHub repository itself on your web browser, should open. And you could download the code as a zip file using this button and then uh, upload it to the server through SSH or your preferred method as well. That works as well. So in my case, I have cloned the repository and now I have the file in my file explorer here. I have the folder. Inside of it are all of the NeuroSim code. So inside of the inference PyTorch folder, we have the uh, PyTorch wrapper or inference, or we have the C++ code that has all of the um, hardware estimations, so the power performance and area estimations. So I've successfully cloned the repo, and now I will need to install all of the packages needed to run the code. So the only package necessary is uh, PyTorch. So to install PyTorch, we can go back to the manual and follow the instructions there. Um, so first of all, we need to create a 
Conda environment. So you can name it whatever you want. We recommend NeuroSim, but I'm going to name it something different for this purpose. I'm going to create an environment. And create name. I'm just going to call it test. Oops, sorry, I have to activate Anaconda. There we are. So now I've activated Conda. Uh, this command just turns it on if it hasn't been already uh, initialized when you open your terminal. But if you install Miniconda, it should uh, start up when you open your terminal. And you'll know it's activated by seeing this uh, base uh, word there. So now that I have Anaconda activated, I will create my uh, new package environment called test. And while that's getting ready, I will go to the PyTorch uh, website to install uh, PyTorch. So we do have the command in the manual, but I'd recommend going to the PyTorch website and getting the most up-to-date version. So we can find the on the PyTorch website and the local installation, we can find our operating system Linux here. And we can, uh, because we have supported PyTorch 12.0, we can use the updated uh, PyTorch CUDA 12. And it also depends on your the drivers in your NVIDIA GPUs. So if your GPUs use a previous version of the drivers, you might need to install a different version of PyTorch but it's different for each person. But for our server, we can support CUDA 12 and uh, NeuroSim also supports that. So we copy this command. So after we select Conda, this is just ensuring where my environment is downloaded. So first we need to activate the environment. So Conda activate test is what I'll do. And then now we can install PyTorch by pasting that command. And it will download all of the packages uh, that are necessary for PyTorch. Usually this will take several minutes, so be patient for it to download. Uh, but here we have finished everything. So now we are using the test conda environment, which has PyTorch installed in it. So we should be able to run the PyTorch wrapper. So now we'll go back to the manual. We've activated our uh, we've activated our um, environment, and now it's time to modify the parameters for NeuroSim and run an example. So first step, what you should be doing is um, based on your the device that you want to use and the circuit architecture you want to use, you can modify the parameters in param.cpp uh, accordingly. And this is for the power performance and area estimations. So in my case, I'm going to be using an RAM device. So I will set mem cell type equal to two. Still want to do conventional parallel because I want to do analog uh, in-memory computing. Then I will leave most of the uh, these features alone, but you can modify these to your liking if you want to change the type of global bus, uh, the interconnect, if you want to use like HTree or XY bus. Other things, including like the mapping type, usually we recommend using the novel mapping method as it has better utilization of the memory arrays. And you can change things like this ADC type. Do you want to use SAR ADC or multi-level sense amplifier? Some other features, including the tech node. In our case, I'm going to be using 40 nanometer RM. So I'll change tech node to 40. We'll keep the temperature and everything else the same. And then further down, we will see things such as the uh, array dimensions. So the number of rows, number of columns, we'll leave that for now. Keep going down. The number of columns that we mux together, we can keep that at eight. And now we get to the level output. Uh, Parameter. This is the number of levels in our multi-level sense amplifier. So 
For example, if I have a 5-bit ADC, I would need 32 levels. I'm going to leave that at 32 for this case. And now cell bit is the precision of the memory device. So how many uh, bits does my memory device have? In our case, I'm going to use four bits in our four bit uh, RM. And then finally, at the bottom, you should change the resistance values for your memory device. So in our case, our RM, we have an on off ratio of 20. So we will change this value to 20. Um, so the off resistance is the on resistance times 20, thus an on off ratio of 20. All right, that's all the parameters I'm going to modify for this. So I've modified the file, and now that me now I need to compile all the C++ code. So right now, first I need to change my current directory into the NeuroSim directory, and then into the directory with all of the C++ code. So that's inside of inference, PyTorch, and NeuroSim. And now if you use the command make, that will make all the C++ code. It will compile it all for you. And we can verify it's working as it's creating the uh, .o files that we need. All right, everything's finished. So now we can go back a directory into the inference PyTorch directory. And then we can run uh, the PyTorch wrapper. So in our case, we'll run python inference.py. We will set inference to one. This is necessary if we want to run the functional simulation of the chip to determine the uh, inference accuracy given our specific device and array uh, parameters. So that's the on-off ratio, the ADC precision, the subarray size, and so on. So we will set our on-off ratio. Now, first we will set the, the data set in the model. So we will use CPAR 10 with VGG8, and we will use wage mode, wage quantization mode. This is described in the uh, menu. So now we will set our on-off ratio to 20, and we will set our cell bit. This is the number of bits per cell. Set that to four, as we did in param.cpp. And then additionally, um, because we use a high precision um, RM, there is some variation in the conductance states. So we are going to set this very parameter to our measured uh, standard deviation of the conductance states. In our case, we will use 0 0.25. So that should be all of the parameters that we need to run. Everything else can be set to the default, so you don't need to specify it. So things like the subarray size and the number of uh, word lines we activate in parallel and the ADC precision, because we're leaving those all the same, we don't have to specify them, although to be extra sure, you can specify it still. So that should be all of our parameters. Now we can run the code. So now we see in the console, it's printing um, various uh, metrics, such as the uh, parameters we've set in inference.py. And then it will begin running the PyTorch wrapper, which includes quantizing the network and then running the inference of all of the data set, all of the images in the data set uh, through the functional simulation, which accounts for the chip design and device level parameters like I mentioned before. So the PyTorch wrapper takes a decent amount of time to run, you know, anywhere between 10 minutes to a few hours, like two hours or so. Um, but the C++ hardware estimations are much faster. Uh, so if you are not interested in the inference accuracy, you can leave inference, this inference parameter at zero and it won't do the PyTorch uh, functional simulation, thus vastly decreasing the total time that it will take NeuroSim to run, although you won't have a accurate um, value for your inference accuracy. So keep that in mind. And as this is running, it will be printing certain um, metrics to this 
log file, which is the directory of which is specified by this log dir parameter. You can change this if you want, but by default, it will print to log slash default. So we can go see where that is log default, and then it has all of the different parameters that we use. And then this is our log for this run. Um, it'll print stuff as it, as it goes, but because it's running the inference functional simulation, it won't print anything for a while. Um, but yeah, that wraps up the uh, tutorial on how to run NeuroSim. Hopefully this is helpful for, for you guys. Um, let's check. Yeah, it should be it. As this runs, um, it will then print out the uh, hardware estimation data. So that will be like the uh, area, energy, and latency of each of the different components in the chip. And will give you the overall performance, such as like the TOPS per watt, TOPS, and uh, area efficiency, and so on. All right, that'll wrap it up.